that comes my way Only in you I live, I move, and I have my being I surrender my will to yours Make me who I am in you Oh, Christ, I can do all things you have your Bibles, go with me to Isaiah chapter 52 Isaiah chapter number 52, verses 1 through 12. We, as the custom is, we stand for the reading of the word. Today I'm going to read out of the King James Version. Starting at the first verse, Isaiah chapter number 52. And, um, First thing I want to give light to is the first two words. Awake, awake. New Living Translation says, wake up, wake up. Before we even go forth with the reading, I want to give you some clarity that whenever Scripture repeats itself, it's because God is trying to emphasize He's trying to place urgency, intentionality. He's trying to push something that he doesn't want us to just let fall to the side. And so the scripture says, awake, awake. Somebody say, awake, awake. Awake, awake, put on thy strength. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy strength. Beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Verse number two goes on to say, shake thyself. Somebody say, shake thyself. It says, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion. Let's get down to verse number six. It says, therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Someone say, I am he, and then say, it is I. Verse number seven goes on to say, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that uh, bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that said unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Verse 8 says, thy watchmen shall lift up the, the voice, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. I'll stop right there for the sake of time. And the topic for today is shake it off. Somebody say shake it off. I want you to say it with some fervor. Say, shake it off. Hallelujah. Father, we do honor and thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to share out of your holy word, to see your voice amplified, to see your heart uh, illuminated to see your name magnified. God, we are here in the empowerment zone, not simply to be heard, not simply uh, to listen, but to be changed. God, we came today for what the world can't give us. We came here and we connected today because for something that we cannot give ourselves. We came here, God, for answers that we don't have. We came here for answers that we may know of and may have forgotten of. 
we came here ultimately to ensure that we are seated the best we know how in the center of your will. You use the written word, the Logos, and you breathe upon it with your spirit and it becomes the rhema for now. And so God, I pray for rhema. For every heart that is open, that's willing, that is ready and wants to receive of you. I pray, Father God, that there be such insight, that there be such an interruption to the norm. That, Father God, that when they walk out of this place, as when they finish listening, oh God, to this message, God, their whole world will be turned upside down. I pray that, Father God, that no one will leave out of this place and no one will leave this experience looking to do things the same. But, God, I declare in Jesus' name that as we receive your word, that, Father God, that we will walk out of here. And who you've called for us to be, doing what it is you've called for us to do. Empowered, encouraged, strengthened, informed, breathed on by Holy Spirit alone. And Father God, I bless you. I bless you, God. That is already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let your neighbor say, shake it off. Hallelujah. Some of y'all don't need to shake while the message is going on. Something hits you, shake it off. If something revelatory comes to you, shake off what was there before the revelation. Whatever you do, make sure you take full advantage of this moment. The scripture goes forth. We're in the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, one of the major prophets, not because his words were more powerful than other prophets, but because there's more written by him that is in the holy canon of scripture. He's speaking to the children of Israel. The Israelites are in a state that we often read of them to be. They're in captivity. If you know scripture, then you know that it was never God's will for God's people to be held captive. But so often or ever so often, or maybe even all the time, God's people have a tendency of going from doing things in a way that pleases him to going down a road that does not please him. And so God will eventually not walk away from the children of God or the children of Israel, but God will allow the children of Israel to walk away from him. This is a very important point that we must remember. God promise never to leave us and he promised never to forsake us but we didn't necessarily promise that we would never leave him or that we would never forsake him and even if we were bold enough to do so we found out that we were not the man or the woman of our word that that moment of passion and making a promise made us to believe that we were. Ultimately, people of God, our own behavior, our own disobedience will often put us in positions that cause us to have to go through things that God didn't intend necessarily for us to have to go through. But what I love about God and you see consistent in his word is no matter what the children of God go through, he never leaves his children. He's never just celebrating their demise or their hardship or their, their suffering or their famines or their wilderness experiences. God is always sitting there waiting patiently, wanting to bring his children back to himself. 
It's just God. Is God being a good father? Is God understanding that even with all of his supreme power and ability that he will not infringe upon our ability to make our own decisions or a.k.a. free will. This is important because contextually the children of Israel are in Babylon. Babylon is not the promised land. Babylon came as a result of not keeping God's commandments in the promised land. But isn't it amazing how God is so patient with us that he's always looking for an opportunity to pull us out of our own depravity even when we caused it. How many people can celebrate God being there for us even when we messed up ourselves? How many can celebrate God in his faithfulness, the fact that, 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 that even when we do deliberate things to, to test him or to, to hurt his heart, that he's still waiting there patiently for us to get ourselves together. And when we do, he has a word of deliverance to get us to where he called us to be. Help me, Lord. Awake. What are we waking up from? We're waking up from what has been for so long. Awake. What are we waking up from? We're awakened from the mindset that we thought we would die with. What are we awakening from? We're, we're awakened from the bitterness in our hearts that we thought we would carry for a lifetime. What are we waking up from? We're waking up from that, that, that status quo type of living for God that we know is just a form but carries no power. What are we waking up from? We're waking up from the deliberate disobedience and rebellion that we've allowed to take us into hard places and to experience hard things. Ultimately, whenever we're not plugged into God, we are sleeping. Ultimately, whenever we take a left, when God said stay straight, we go into slumber. And sometimes the slumber, people of God, is so deep that we need to hear a word from the Lord. Sometimes our attitude, our mindset is so jacked up that we need to hear a word from the Lord. Not, not just a word, but we, we need a word from the Lord. Not just words from a book, but we need word from the Lord. Not just words from a preacher, but a word from the Lord. Because only a word from God can wake us up. We sat in many services and we stayed asleep. We sat in many Bible studies and we stayed asleep. We sat in many prayer meetings and we remained in a place of slumber. But when God begins to utter his voice, as the Bible says, his voice is mightier than that of many waters. It doesn't matter how sleep you've been. It doesn't matter how deep you've gone. When God says, awake, awake, guess what? Something in you begins to come back to life. You say, well, pastor, what does that have to do with shaking it off? It has everything to do with shaking it off. Because if you're shaking it off with your own strength, you ain't shaking it off. It is your own strength efforts that have you so discouraged. It is your own strength efforts that is the reason why you're tired of church to begin with. It is your own strength efforts is the reason why you can't stand dealing with church folk and you're tired of going through the motions of service and it seems like you can never get nothing out of the service no matter how many services you attend, how many places you seem to go. Why? Because unless the Lord is behind what's happening, you don't have the power to deliver yourself from your circumstances circumstance however but when the Lord tells you it's time to get up 
tell your neighbor it's time to get up. Scripture says, awake and put on thy strength. The statement put on thy strength alludes to the fact that what you were wearing before wasn't strength. Something happened. You went from a place of virtue, a place of stature to a place of brokenness and weakness. But it's okay. When you wake up, God says it's time to put back on who I call you to be. He goes on to say, put on beautiful garments. Oh, Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised or the unclean. As you will see in verse number two, he says, shake thyself. Shake yourself from the dust. The reason why you weren't wearing beautiful garments is not because there were no beautiful clothes in your wardrobe. You weren't wearing beautiful garments because where you were living didn't require them. Help me, Holy Ghost. You were in the dust. And in the dust, the only thing you're going to do is get dirty. You were in the dust. And in the dust, all you can do is roll around in your filth and in your mess and in your mud. So there's no need to put beautiful garments on to go nowhere. There's no need to pull out your best clothing if you're about to do dirty work. So the scriptures tells, it tells Zion, the people of God, the called out ones, the ones that were elected, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the present day, the body of Christ. God is calling us to wake up and put back on strength. Strength carries a frequency all by itself. Strength is something that causes you to stop complaining. Strength is something that makes a hard task look easy. Strength is, a, is something that causes an enemy to not look like a threat anymore. Strength is something that causes you to be able to handle the call of God that God has placed upon your life. Strength takes what would be difficult and it makes it more than possible. Real quick, why don't we consider just briefly how many things we've tried to do in God's name with no strain? Awake, awake, Zion, put back on your strain. Those dusty garments that have become the definition of your life, those dirty clothings. That everybody has begun to, to identify you by. Those dirty situations. Those cruddy relationships. And those hard situations and challenges in your life. That have begun to define who you are. God says it's time to shake those things off. Shake yourself. But shake yourself from the dust. Don't just shake yourself because Simon said to shake yourself. Shake yourself from the dust. That means it's time to literally begin to shake yourself out of things that are not like God. Somebody say hallelujah. It says arise and sit down. Here I just want you to know that there is a difference. Between lying down and sitting. There's a difference. Both postures are low. But one of them carries a stature that's intentional. Reminded of the text that says, sit here till I make your enemies your footstool. There's a difference between when you are told to take a seat 
and when you're found rolling around in the dust. There is a difference between when God says, stand up and then sit down. Because what he's saying when he tells you to stand up is that you're no longer stuck on the ground. When you sit, you're not sitting because you're weak. You're sitting because you choose to sit. And so for so many of us, we have been living in a way that we've been forcibly licking the dust on the ground. Our clothes are nasty and filthy. What was once beautiful is dirty and nasty. And it's become our preferred resting place. But I hear the Lord say, awake, awake, shake thyself out of the dust. He says, it's time for you to shake yourself. It's interesting how much we've begun to rely on others for our well-being. In fact, we have a tendency to blame where we are or on what other people either did or were or failed to do or failed to be. The frequency of this text doesn't consider others as necessary for you to move forward. I know it's difficult because our minds want to go, but we all need each other and we all go through hard times. It is so true. But when God says, awake, awake, Zion, put on your strength. That is a moment that you don't need a spotter. In that moment, he says, I'm putting you more than what's necessary to handle the task. It's time for you to wake that strength up. At this point, a spotter minstrel will defy the strength that you carry. At this moment, a spotter would, 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 would lie about what you're capable of handling and what you cannot handle. There are moments when God says, you've got to lift this thing yourself. Help me, Holy Ghost. So all of this, he says, shake thy Self. He says, loose thyself. Somebody say, loose thyself. He said, you loose the bands from off of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. It's not that other people don't play a role in your life holistically and the fruitfulness and the support that you receive as believers that there are those intentional moments when God says no they can't come into this space because this space is between me and you this space has to do with you going from a caterpillar to a butterfly this space has to do with you defying generational curses and defying lies that are trying to perplex and plague your heritage for centuries I need you to be strong. I need you to put on your garment of strength. I know you're tired. I know you've been going through a lot. I know it's been difficult. I know you're hurting. He said, but I've got strength for you. Somebody yell out strength. Listen, he goes on to talk about how familiar Israel is with bondage. Often you'll see in scripture, God will use the servant of God to remind the children of Israel what they went through in Egypt and how they were in captive for several years and how God wrought a great deliverance. To this day, they're called to remember the Passover and, and call a solemn assembly every year to honor God delivering them out of Egypt. But isn't it something how no matter what God has done for us in times past that somehow we managed to still give the devil a street credit. We keep giving him credit like he has access to us. 
Oh, come on, somebody. We, we want, we, oh, no, no, no. You need to respect the devil because, no, the devil is a lie. I don't have to have no respect for the devil. What I need to do is fear God. And so what we do is even though God has already showed how powerful he is, we have this tendency to operate in weakness. In fact, we prefer a weak frequency. We prefer something that's going to bring attention and not something that's going to bring correction. We prefer something that's going to bring comfort and not something that's going to bring confidence. Come on, people of God. We prefer something that's going to make us feel good, not something that's going to cause us to be good. Shake yourself from the dust. You were never weak. You are always strong. Just put on your garments of strength because you are the children of the most high God. Be reminded even as a child of David when he saw Goliath and he said, how dare you defy the armies of the living God. I've killed a lion and I've killed a bear and this uncircumcised Philistine, he'll come down too. Somebody shout hallelujah. Verse 6 goes on to say, therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that speaketh. Behold, it is I. How will they know that it's God? They're going to know it's God because nobody else could deliver. They're going to know it's God because nobody else could keep their word. No one else had the ability, the power, the insight to deliver the, the children of Israel out of where they were. No one else had insight. Nobody else had foresight. No one else had revelation of what was going on, but God had the inside plan. He knew what was going on and he knew what was getting ready to take place. And he said, look, I'm going to do this, but when I do it, it's just going to be a reminder that I am the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. I am the God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and I'll be the God that delivers you out of this captivity. But you must first wake up. Wake up and shake yourself from the dust. You were not meant to live in spiritual poverty your entire life. Verse number seven goes on and says this. I want you to catch this and pay attention to it. In fact, go, with it, go there with me if we can put it on the screen. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that publisheth peace how beautiful beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring good tidings of good how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that publisheth salvation what is he talking about in this text? Is he talking about a good preacher that can preach a good message on a Sunday? Is he talking about a great motivational speaker that can make you feel better about yourself when you feel down and out? No. What he's talking about is not the supposed possibility of deliverance. What he's talking about is the feet of those that have been delivered. You cannot publish peace when you're walking in chaos. You cannot publish peace when you're still in captivity yourself. You cannot publish peace when you're the one instigating all of the troubles. The beautiful feet weren't the ones that walked and knocked on the door and said, Jesus loves you. The beautiful feet are the ones that are walking in the love of Jesus Christ. It's one thing to proclaim his love. It's another thing to walk in it. He said, how beautiful upon the mountains. Why the mountains? Because... When you needed to get something out, in that day, we didn't have microphones. 
in that day, if you wanted to publish something across to, the, to other parts of the land, you went to a high place. And in that high place, it could be a shofar, it could be a trumpet going off, or it could just be the heralding from the mouths of those who have that assignment. It is for that reason that you also see it in verse, verse number eight. It says, thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. The watchmen cannot watch from the dust. Hallelujah, I'll say it again. I feel God, the watchmen cannot watch from the dust. Another issue we have in the church of Jesus Christ is we've got people supposedly watching from the dust. You cannot watch when you're all mixed up when everything that everybody else is mixed up in. You cannot watch when you get as offended as everybody else that's offended. You cannot watch when you struggle to forgive just like everybody else struggle to forgive. You struggle to give like everybody else struggle to give. You struggle to sacrifice just like everybody else struggle to sacrifice. You struggle to serve just like everybody else struggle to serve. You cannot be a watchman in the dust. Wake up, Zion. Wake up. Shake yourself out of the dust. Yes, you've been called to be one that proclaims the gospel, but you'll never be able to do so in power from the dust. Yes, you have an assignment to watch from a high place and ensure the safety of all of God's people, but you cannot do that in the valley laid down in the dust. So you've got to shake yourself. Some of us have assignments, ministry assignments. Some of us are licensed ministers, licensed what we call clergy. We're not just servants because we're Christ followers. We're doubly servants because we've committed ourselves openly to the assembly to serve God's people. From that standpoint, you have an assignment as a watchman over God's people. And so the only thing you can do when you can't watch is wake up and shake yourself. I can't give you a word to tell you to stay in the dust. I have to tell you to shake yourself. Shake yourself. I know the devil try to use something close to you to distract you every time you're making spiritual progress. But you should also know as a result that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And when he try to throw that same old stuff, he always seems to try to throw, to throw us off. Whether it's a job situation, whether it's a relational challenge, whether it's some type of old habit or old struggle. I'm here to tell you, this is not the time to lay back in the dust and act like God has to deliver you. It's time to wake up and shake yourself. Put on your strength and stop giving over to the, the, the frequency of this world that makes you a victim. I asked the Lord to help me to deliver this message softly. But when I start talking, it doesn't quite come out that way. Hopefully the song provided somewhat of a buffer. Because I don't see myself going back. The beautiful feet upon the mountains are the ones that woke up, shook themselves, put on their power, put on their strength, and they broke free. Ah, God help me. Those are the ones that heard the voice of God. God and they responded. They didn't worry about who was looking. They didn't worry about what was going on in their life or in their family. But when they heard God speak, wake up and put on strength. The 
God in them begin to wake up and they begin to put on strength that they may have forgotten they had. And when God told them that it's time to shake yourself and shake that dust off of your body and shake that dust off of your heart, they responded in faith and they broke free. When they broke free, minstrel, let me get a camera a chance to follow me. When they broke free from a place of freedom, they could herald deliverance. We're free. We broke into the bands of captivity. God's word is true. God is restoring Israel. He's lifting the church back to where it belongs. The frequency of Babylon is being thrown down. From that place of freedom, you publish not just a coming salvation, a salvation that has come. Hundred of the Osiah. Oh, somebody in here loves the word of God and you're eating this up. See, the word salvation, we know that through Jesus we are saved and you got to be saved. You need salvation in order to go to heaven. And we hear salvation thrown around like it's a loose term, Mr. No, salvation is everything. Hallelujah. It's not just something. Salvation is everything. It is the difference between dead and alive. It's the difference between the old man and the new man. It's the difference between being in bondage and being free. Because salvation is nothing but deliverance. It is Jesus paying the ultimate price for our penalty for sin and letting us free so that we can live in the presence of God and be what he called us to be. Life outside of God is not life. And living without God is not living. You cannot herald life if you have none. How beautiful upon the mountains. When was the last time we could, we could utter something beautiful? When was the last time we declared the church shining forth in beauty? When was the last time we could publish that the body of Christ was standing in victory and in liberty? When was the last time we were able to publish in this nation that the Lord reigns? Blessed be the name of the Lord. When was the last time as a united, united front that we've been able to say that salvation is the Lord? Many of us are in bondage today. Somewhere in between faith and no faith. And we're trying to publish good tidings. We're trying to publish peace. We're trying to publish good things. We're even trying to publish salvation. And we're still in the dust. The Lord is calling his people to awake out of their slumber. No need to sit here and contemplate over what happened over the last however many years. It doesn't matter when it happened. It doesn't matter how long it happened. It doesn't matter who it happened to and who did it. It doesn't matter when the Lord says time to wake up because I've got strength for you. Once the Lord has strength for you that he's ready to give you, you can no longer say you have no strength. If you don't have strength after the Lord presents strength, it's because you turned away from strength. And who can save one who doesn't want to be saved? Put on your strength. The watchmen shall lift up their voices. The voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. When the watchmen sing, when the watchmen sing, when the watchmen sing, 
they sing because from whatever vantage point that they have, they see that the enemies that are lurking or have been lurking or working against God's people are no more. When the watchmen sing, their assignment is to make sure that the land is safe so that the people are safe. And when the watchmen sing, that means salvation has really taken place. That means deliverance has been accomplished. That means captivity has been overthrown. When the watchmen sing, that means Babylon has come down. We live in Babylonian times. We live in a type of Babylon. And as a result, the people of God have been asleep. But prophetically, the Lord is saying it's time for God's people to wake up. I want you to think that I'm insensitive to the things that we navigate in this life. Truth is, I have to navigate things myself, whether they're with my personal life, my own internal challenges and struggles, whether it's with my family life, my wife, my children, what affects them affects me, whether it's my extended family, my siblings, my parents, and on and on and on. I understand the challenges that try to come our way to throw us off of our assignment and to throw us into a place of slumber. If it were up to me, I would say sleep on. But because it's not up to me, God told me to tell you it's time to wake up. Wake up and put on your strength. If you've been praying weak and quietly and timidly, it's time to turn up the volume on your prayers. Help me, Holy Ghost. God, I just pray you. No! I've got a garment of strength for you. I want you to pray out of that garment of strength. Huh? I want you to pray from a place of power and anointing. I want you to altogether bypass the enemy's frequency. And I want you to tap into the spirit. And I want you to be answered by Holy Spirit to pray. Maybe you sing, maybe you sing, I love you, Lord, and I live my life to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in you. No! Wake up! Time to put on strength. You have a belly that's filled with the Holy Ghost. It has the power to bring light to dead things. It has the power to waken up sleeping things. And so you don't whisper it like you're in your last days right before you die. You declare it with strength like you've just been revived. In verse 12, it said, for ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. Listen to this. He says, for the Lord will go before you. The Lord will go before you. The Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel, the God of Israel will be 
your re-reward. And that word re-reward literally means your rear ward. It means the one that's going to guard behind you. So the scripture is literally saying that the Lord is going to go before you. And the God of Israel is going to have your back. When you put on strength, you're not putting on your own strength. Because your own strength didn't have the power to do nothing to begin with. He says, but if you wake up and you put on a garment of strength. And you shake the dust off of your body. And you stand upon your feet. He said, I'll begin to break through on your behalf. I'll prepare a way that there was no way. I'll be before you and I'll guard behind you hallelujah the Lord has said I'm going before you and I'm going behind you I'm going before you I'm making the crooked place straight but I'm also going to be behind you. You don't have to ever look back to where you come from or what may be trying to get you. If you just get up, if you just wake up, if you just put on a garment of strength, I'm ready to take you where you know I've called you to be. Wake up. Shake yourself. Wake up and shake yourself. No longer are you going to stay in that prison place. You're coming out of it in Jesus' name. Wake up and shake yourself. Shake the dust off of your body. I don't care how long you've been wallowing in it. I've got power for you. Huh? I've got power for you. Huh? I've got power for you. Hallelujah. Listen. I dare somebody. I dare you bless them. I dare you to break like a hundred rules right now. I dare you to break some rules your mind has set right now. Start blessing him in a way that the enemy don't want you to bless him. Start crying out to God in a way the enemy said you had to say shut up Lord. I dare you to shake the devil off. I dare you to shake the devil off. Break the rules. Break the rules. Oh, by Holy Ghost, put on a garment of strength. I've got power for you, said the Lord. It's on the inside of you. It's always been there. But I'm ready to wake it up. There it goes. Ma katalabandiosa. There it is right there. Loose. Loose your home, Satan. Power belongs to God. All power belongs to God. He's going before me, but he's also got my back. I can't lose and I can't stay where I am. I'm getting up and I'm moving forward. I may have to limp on my way, but I'm going. But one thing I'm not doing is I'm not staying in this place no more. Hey, break some more rules. My son. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Break some rules. Break them. Break them. Break them. Power of God. 
anointing of the Holy Ghost. Break the rules. Break them. Break the lies. Break the deceptions. Destroy. The Bible says the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. I dare you to tap into your assignment. I dare you to tap into God's choosing. I dare you to tap into God's purpose. Oh, ma, so tola mandiosa. Because the time is coming where the word of the Lord said, My people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that speaketh. And behold, it is I. They're going to know because there's going to be a sound. A sound that breaks God's people out of captivity. A sound that breaks God's people out of depravity. A sound that breaks God's people out of poverty. They're going to know that God is God. Because those areas of anguish, those areas of jealousy, those areas of lies and deception, those areas of strong anger, they're coming down. See, miracles. It's the only thing that God is looking for from this ministry. Miracles. Miracles. I don't know how I broke free, but I'm free. Miracles. I used to live in my mind. None Shabbat. But I broke free. I used to be timid and afraid about everything. But all I feel is boldness. All I feel is anointing. All I feel is power. Listen. People of God. God. Name this ministry Breakers for a reason. God literally changed our name. He said, you will no longer be just great faith. See, some of us still want to live in great faith. Some of us think that by going into the breaker anointing that we're somehow losing our faith. But I'm here to tell you, great faith is what opens the way for the breaker. Anything that's not of faith is sin. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But faith is supposed to birth miracles. Faith is supposed to pay the, uh, 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 an oasis in, a, in the middle of a wilderness place. Faith is supposed to bring deliverance where there's been captivity. Will anybody agree with miracles right now? Come on, join me in the spirit. The breaker anointed. Nothing less. Then the Lord who goes before us and God who watches our back. For Micah 2.13 says the breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. Their king shall pass before them and the Lord at the head of them. Our assignment is to break out, to break up 
to break through, to uproot, to plant. This is the frequency of this ministry. It is apostolic in nature and nothing short of miracles will do. So wake up. Masa bakansutu. Rime kendiriosa. Melalala bakando resetulama. Listen, you're listening over Facebook Live right now. And you don't even know why you're still tuned in because you're not even a part of the church. But I speak breakthrough right now. Mendo resetulama. I speak breakthrough all in your heart, all in your belly. I see dryness. I see a desert place within your womb. I see how the enemy has tried to take the love of Christ and the joy of Jesus out of your life. But as the Lord gives me utterance, I prophesy to you that are listening right now. And I declare breakthrough. I declare breakthrough because God said so. I declare breakthrough because it's his will concerning you. Breakthrough is coming to you now. Just begin to praise God right where you are. There are going to always be some doubting Thomases, but you don't have to be one. There are going to always be some people that got to wait to see the miracles happen before they go all in. But I believe I got about four or five people that I say I'm all in right now. Have my mouth, God. Have my belly, have my belly, have my belly, have my belly. You do what you want to do. You be what you want to be. I'm done holding it up. I'm done keeping it from you. Have my belly, God. Have my belly, God. Have my belly, God. Do what you want to do. Bring the life bringing waters. I know they're on the inside. I don't want to keep them inside no longer. Listen, intercessors. Intercessors, I watch people. The Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you, Makasa, Misiturabai. You got to break some more rules in the spirit. I need you to do it right now violently. Break some more rules. Break the rules. They're keeping you from going to that next place. And you can't watch out for the souls if you are not willing to bring those areas down. Break it. Break it. Low self-esteem. Break it. Shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. But the Lord of the breakthrough is here. It don't matter that we're social distancing. He's here. Huh. He's here. He's in your home. He's in your heart. He's in your children. God is here. And he's blown the way that there was no way. Awake. Shake yourself out of the dust. Rebaka. Lumakansoturamaya. For you are a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. Shake yourself out of the dust. Shake yourself out of the dust. Shake yourself out of the dust. Listen. There's a Hebrew word, na'ar, the Hebrew word for shake, na'ar. It means to tumble about. In fact, it's a primitive root 
and they consider a lion in his mane. And if you can imagine a lion with a mane shaking, this is where the idea of shaking yourself in Isaiah comes from. It literally means to tumble about, to shake off, to shake out, to, to shake self. It means to overthrow, to toss up, and to toss down. And I need some people who will join me in the spirit. And I need you to begin to, be, to start shaking. It's time to start shaking some stuff off. It's time to start shaking some stuff off. Join me in your homes. Begin to shake some stuff off. Hola Bashata. Come on, come on. There's deliverance in your shake. There's deliverance in your shake. Why? Because God told you to shake. I'm shaking because God told me to shake. How did you get the victory? God wrought the victory for me. That's right, shake. Because God told you to shake. Robabakashataya. Watchmen, now listen when you go to the New Testament, there's a Greek word for shake. Hallelujah. And the word is something like Abad Ineso. Abad Ineso. And literally, it means to brush off. Some things you just need to brush off. I hear the Holy Ghost say some of this stuff you just need to, they're not even big situations and they don't even take much time. But you just need to brush it off. But then there's another Greek word. It's a little bit different. It's, et, it's ectinasso. Ectinasso. Another Greek word. in this word for shake. It means to shake violently. So God is saying some things we just brush off. But then there's some things, people of God, that we've got to shake violently. Some of this stuff run deep. Some of these curses run deep. Some of these pains run deep. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, for those that are listening and for those that are in the house that you need to violently shake some stuff off. God says some of this stuff you got to violently shake off. Come on, people of God. Pornography. Sexual sin and perversion. Shata. Leba kasataya. Some of this stuff you got to violently shake off. Come on, shake. Shake. I'm free. By the blood of the Lamb. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. 
I dare you to shake it off. Demons of lesbianism, homosexuality, sexual pleasures, adultery, fornication. God said it's time to shake it off. God says it's time to shake it off. Yes, shake, 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 shake. Hallelujah. Listen. I looked at several instances in scripture where there was a need to just shake stuff off. Sometimes it was the result of opposition or personal insults. Paul had to shake it off. Sometimes it was persecution and slander. Literally people defaming your name. You can go mental. Or you can shake it off. I dare somebody to just find those areas in your life where the enemy is trying to give you a heart blow. And I dare you not because Aramis told you to do it. Because this is what the Lord said the word for today is. I dare you to shake it off. I dare you to shake it off. You know, Jesus literally told his disciples, he said, I'm sending you out two by two. He said, some people are going to receive you and others are going to reject you. He said, but guess what? For the ones that don't receive you, this is what I want you to do. When you get to the edge of that town, I want you to shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Listen, literally Jesus was teaching his disciples not to be moved by rejection. Not to be moved with offense because people don't receive them. When you come with the word of God and people are not receptive to what the Lord is saying, I hear the spirit of the Lord say, you just got to shake it off. Just shake it off. Don't get mental. Be spiritual. And shake it off. And shake it off. Hallelujah. Listen. Got another scenario. And we're done. Anybody remember when Paul. He was with the bar barbarians. And they were being kind to him. And it was winter time. And they had built a fire. To keep warm. In the midst of the fire. In the midst of of the fire right there in the midst of the fire a viper jumped out and grabbed hold of Paul's arm it was a venomous viper and listen to this and I'm gonna let this go those kind-hearted people that were making Paul's way easy they they flipped the script on them they switched their opinion about him. They went from kind and supportive to the moment he got attacked. They said something must be wrong with him. They said this is happening because something's wrong with him. And God is judging him. And I'm here to tell you that sometimes the situation is people wishy-washy. They happy when things is going the way they want them to go. They're happy when things are going in a way that they can get with or a way that they even understand. But when attacks come, they flip the script and they change their opinion. They thought for sure because this venomous snake got a hold of Paul's arm that Paul was going to die from this satanic attack. 
But the scripture says, the Bible says, somebody said the Bible says, while they flipped their opinion, this is for somebody today. Even when they have faltered in their position towards the man of God. Paul with a snake on his arm with teeth just engraved into his arm. He began to shake. And the Bible says that the snake fell off of him and it fell into the fire and they waited for Paul to fall and die only to see Paul not moved at all. Help me Holy Ghost. They waited, they waited, they waited. They waited. They waited. And they waited for him to die. And they waited for him to die. And they waited for him to die. And but listen, bring the music down. After a while. Listen. After a while. They flipped the script again. I'm here to tell somebody. You got to endure long enough for them to flip the script again. Sometimes people don't understand the power of God. Sometimes people don't understand God's commitment to his anointed ones. But you got to stand and wait for the flip the script to flip again when it was all said and done they changed their mind and they repented they changed their mind and they repented sometimes your shake is not just for you Sometimes you're shaking for somebody else's deliverance. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said, because I cause all things to work together. I cause all things to work together for the good. For them that love me, said the Lord. To them that are called according to my purpose. I cause all things to work together for the good. Even when the viper has you in his fangs. Shake it off. Shake it off. Back into the fire where it belongs. And watch God. Watch God be a God of his word. When he said this. I'll cause you to tread upon serpents. I'll cause you to tread upon scorpions. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means be able to harm you. Shake it off. Shake it off. You might have gotten bitten. Shake it off. You may have been under attack, but shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. I hear the Holy Ghost say, shake it off. You shall live and not die. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yes, yes, yes. 
Surely the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all flesh be silent before him. Shake it off. I got another one for you. Bring the music down real quick. David has sinned with Bathsheba. And after having had Bathsheba's husband killed, David had conceived and Bathsheba had conceived and bare a child. And as part of the consequences of David's wrong actions, the Lord told David that his son would not live. Literally, David, he cried out to God nonstop. He wouldn't eat. He didn't move. He cried out, lamented for seven days straight, pleading for God to change his mind and allow his son to live. And those that were there to tend to, to David they were deeply concerned about David because he would not move. And then on that seventh day, word came that the child had passed. And they discussed between themselves like, oh, man, if he was tripping out about him being sick, he's going to lose it if he finds out that his son is actually dead. But look what happened. Scripture says that what happened next is that David saw them whispering and he put two and two together that his son had passed. And David did something that's crazy. The Bible says once he got the word, he confirmed it with those that were there. He got up. He washed up. He would put an ointment on his body. He put on fresh clothes. And he went and asked for something to eat. Not only that, but then he went and he lay with his wife and they conceived again another son named Solomon. Name which meant beloved of God. Some of us are so stuck in the mess ups of our yesterday that we're not conceiving anything today. And for some of us, shaking it off is doing what David did. Your guilt, your shame, your condemnation, and anything else that goes in that whole family, for some of us shaking it off, for some of us shaking ourselves out of the dust, is leaving that place where we know we messed up. Leaving that place where we know we harmed others. Leaving that place where we know we left God. Not staying there and putting ourselves in a prison and putting ourselves in the dust because we don't quote deserve to get nothing from God. If God were to mark iniquity, no one could stand. The Bible says David got up. He understood that he would live until one day when he died, he would see that son again. But there was no need for him to spend any more energy trying to bring to life the son that is no longer alive. And the Lord wants some of us to know that you're spending too much time on something that's dead. That you're not able to conceive something else that will bring life. It's time to let that place go. It's time to get up without apology. Put on fresh clothes. Get some fresh lotion and clean yourself up real good. Dress yourself real nice and get a good meal out. Like the scripture said, it's time to put on strength. 
It's time to find those beautiful garments. There's no need to stay in this desert place no more. There's no need to, to stay in this place of lamentation no more. It's time to get up. Because there's something beloved of God that he wants to bring forth out of you. That staying in that place of dust will never come forth out. I wasn't going to share that particular scenario, but the Lord impressed on my heart that someone needs to hear that version of shake it off. If that's you, I dare you to get on your knees. I dare you to lift up your hands to Jesus. To repent to him. For whatever area you've wronged God, or wronged others. With a pure heart, ask his forgiveness. And after that, get up. Get up. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Because it's time to put on strength. It's time to put on those beautiful garments. You're coming out of that prison place. You're coming out of that place of guilt and shame. And God is calling you to his divine purpose and his plan for your life. If you receive that today from the Lord, out of your spirit you are. I want you to just bless him. From the purest place that you know you have in you. And so, bless him. Bless them from the depths of your heart. Get up. Shake yourself. Come on. Break those demonic rules. And bless them. Bless him. Break those demonic rules, those lies with your praise. We learned about praise. Come on, bless him. Everything that's in you, bless him. From a pure place, just you and Jesus. Like David, it's time to get up. Holy Ghost, now will you do what they cannot do? Will you quicken them in their spirit? Awaken your life like never before on the inside of them. Holy Ghost. Uh, come on, purity, purity. That's why the scripture says that no longer will you hang with the unclean and you won't have dealings with the uncircumcised. No, our hearts are going to be pure before the Lord and we're going to endeavor to live the life that is going to honor God in every way. That's the pureness. That's the pureness. Hallelujah.